Go ahead. Okay. Ah, unhappy, storm-tossed soul with none to comfort you. I will make garnets your building stones and sapphires your foundations. I will build your towers and rubies, your gates and precious stones, your border with gems. All your children shall be taught by the eternal and great shall be the righteous, the happiness of your children. You shall be embellished. I'm sorry, I gotta make this a little bigger. Hold on a minute. Okay, good. You shall be established in righteousness, safe from oppression and afraid, safe from terror. It shall not come near you. Should any attack you, it will not be my doing. Whoever attacks you will fall on your account. Uh, wait a minute. I just, okay. You'll fall on your account. Wait, we'll, we'll, okay. It is I who created the smith who fans the coals in the fire and forges the... I'm really losing my place for some reason today. Forges weapons by his work. I also create the destroyer to wreak havoc. No weapon fashioned against you can succeed. You shall defeat all who rise to accuse you. That is the heritage of the eternal servants. And I am the source of their vindication, says the eternal. So come all who are thirsty, come for water. Even if you have no money, Come, buy food and eat. How can they buy food if they have no money? <laughs> uh, whoops, what, what just happened here? I, I keep on losing this. Where am I now? Oh, okay. Buy food without, wait. What just happened here? Come buy food with, uh, the next page. Just a minute. Okay, all right. But then it said, come buy food without money, wine and milk without cost. Why spend money for what is not bread? Why spend your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen well to me, and you shall eat what is good, and your soul shall delight in abundance. Open your ears and come to me. Hearken, and you shall live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, like the true love I extend to David. As once I made him a witness to the world, a prince and commander of nations, so now you shall summon people you do not know, and people that you do not know, you shall come running to you. Because of the eternal, your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has given you glory. Okay. Wow, look at the next posture. That makes you think of Philip, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, it's all about judging, right? right? There you go. <laughs> all right. So that was pretty interesting, eh? That was very yeah. short. Yeah, I like the first yeah. line though. Ah, unhappy storm tossed soul. Yes. I like that, <laughs> I like that opening. Right. So poetic. Well, the whole thing was quite poetic. Man. You know what I loved was um, when he talked about how much he loved David and David was a king of nations and how many people will go running towards you. That's really, ah, that's so beautiful. <laughs> no, no, wait a second. Here, uh, Gary, the first word is in Hebrew, ania. Isn't that yeah. me and not I? I where does this ah come from? Dad, I don't know. Ania, but ani is spelled with an aleph, not an ayin. Yeah, interesting. Just the word ani, right? I, I, ani off, I don't know. Unhappy. So ara, lo nuchama, no one to take care of you. I think, it, I don't know. I, I To be honest, I don't know. It's interesting. Storm toss soul. I think Monique is with us now. Oh, good. Hi, the everybody. birthday girl is here. Yom Huled et Sameach. Yom Huled et Sameach. Yom Huled et Sameach. You're still celebrating your birthday, Monique. Yes. <laughs> It's a weekly celebration. <laughs> Did you go out and have a drink now? Because you're old enough. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. She just turned 21. Go. Yeah, she can There you go. Home. So you went crazy, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> yes, we did. Uh, Not me. I don't drink, but everybody else did. <laughs> All right. Let's see. I, I was going to say, isn't that section where it talks about if you're hungry, come in? Isn't that similar to the beginning of this, 
Passover Haggadah? Doesn't it begin, if you are hungry, let them come in? Yeah, that's supposed oh, to be for the stranger. If you are tired or needy. Yes, yeah, for the stranger. Yeah, it's. But yeah. I don't know. If, I don't know if it, is it that right at the beginning of the Haggadah? I know it's in there. Let all yeah, who are hungry yeah. come and I eat. Thought, yeah. I've always thought that yeah. was addressing the stranger to come in. Maybe right. I'm wrong. Or whoever. Yeah. 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 Right. But it totally connects it, though, too, because it says people who you do not know will be running towards you. That's a stranger, right? I, that's what I get. Right. That's, what, that's, that's true. what I think connects it for that's me. True. That's awesome. Makes me think of people converting, right? Yeah. Joining the, you know. True. Where are you, Michael? Are you driving? No, I'm parked. Good. Oh. Technically, I'm not far from home. I'm just kind of pulled over near a park, kind of, and just chilling. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> Technology. Iris and Kevin were on the beach in Maine the other day at Saturday services. Oh, my gosh, yeah. <laughs> that's right. They were, right? They were on the beach in Maine. Yeah, they oh, were boy. having a good time, too, yeah. Yep. Right. All right, so, so love, should, should we start I love, the... Be, I just want to say before we start, if I could just briefly, because I've talked about this before, but I just love the basic idea that throughout the Torah, you guys probably would agree with me, everything seems to be, you know, cause and effect. I mean, it's cause and effect. And I just love that, the cause and effect and the fact that we get the choice. That's all I wanted to say. And that, I yeah. see that all through the Torah. Right. I mean, it's such yeah. a basic thing, but it's so important, though. Right. And also what I love about it, too, is like that whole line of if you choose me, I will be your God. Right. That's like, OK, like that to me speaks volumes to me, you know, like. So like cause and effect, like goes to, uh, I believe, like there should be an action. Right. That's what I always feel. I feel like Torah is action. You know, it's so it's the active. cause it's the cause and effect and it teaches you what you should do to affect, you know, that's right. That's right. What, even you if know, you don't even use the term God. Right. If right, no one even right. thinks of it, it's just like, boom, it happens anyway. So, yep. The instruction manual for the good life. <laughs> Who wants to start? I'll start for a little while, and then somebody else can take over. Awesome. Okay. See this day I set before you blessing and curse. Blessing if you obey the commandments of the eternal, your God, that I enjoin upon you this day. And curse if you do not obey the commandments of the eternal, your God, but turn away from the path that I enjoin upon you this day and follow other gods whom you have not experienced. When the eternal your God brings you into the land that you are about to enter and possess, you shall pronounce the blessing at Mount Ger Gerizim and the curse at Mount Ebo. Both are on the other side of the Jordan, beyond the West Road. That is in the land of the Canaanites who dwell in the Arabah, near Gilgal, by the Terebinths of Morah. For you are about to cross the Jordan to enter and possess the land that the eternal your God is assigning to you. When you have occupied it and are settled in it, take care to observe all the laws and rules that I have set before you this day. I'm sorry, one second. I just had to send a text message here. There you go. These are the laws and rules that you must carefully observe in the land that the eternal God of your ancestors is giving you to possess as long as you live on earth. You must destroy all the sites at which the nations you are to dispossess worship their gods, whether on lofty mountains or on hills or under any luxuriant tree. Tear down their altars, smash their pillars, put their sacred posts to the fire and cut down the images of their gods, obliterating their name from that site. Do not worship the eternal your God in like manner, but look only to the site that the eternal your God will choose amidst all your tribes as God's habitation. 
to establish the divine name there. There you are to go, and there you are to bring your burnt offerings and other sacrifices, uh, your tithes and contributions, your votive and free will offer. Offer. Offerings and the firstlings of your herds and flocks. Together with your household, you shall feast there before the eternal your God, happy in all the undertakings in which the eternal your God has blessed you. You shall not act at all as we now act here, each household as he pleases, because you have not yet come to the allotted haven that the eternal your God is giving you. When you cross the Jordan and settle in the land that the eternal your God is allotting to you, and God grants you safety from all your enemies around you, and you live in security. Then you must bring everything that I command you to the site where the eternal your God will choose to establish the divine name, your burnt offerings, and other sacrifices, your tithes and contributions, and all the choice votive offerings that you vow to the eternal. And you shall rejoice before the eternal your God, with your sons and daughters and with your male and female slaves, along with the fam family of the Levite in your settlements, for he has no territorial allotment among you. Oh, I'm sorry. Take care not to sacrifice your burnt offerings in any place you like, but only in the place that the eternal will choose in one of your tribal territories. There you shall sacrifice your burnt offerings can I interject for one second? Yeah. Yes. I just wanted to point out, um, and this is really key, is that Moses says that God will grant you safety from all your enemies around you and you and you will live in security. Um, because when Gary and I have been talking about uh, reading the book of Joshua instead of the Haftorah next cycle, yeah. and we're going to see that. And Granted, it doesn't, jo, the book of Joshua doesn't talk about how long they live in security, <laughs> but there is a period of safety and security. Um, well, you, you know what I got out of this, which I think is interesting? I just got this as I was reading this. When they mm -hmm. say that God, you know, chooses this settled area, and then if you think about it, this whole thing between the Israelis and the Arabs, well, you can say it's in the Torah, it says, that God gave us that land. Right. I'm just saying, you know, I just think it's interesting that it's in there. I'm not, I know people will, of course. I know. But I think and that's yeah. quite interesting. Yeah, okay. It is. And that yeah, since 1948, yeah. guess what? It's re-established, right? I always yeah. feel like, wow, right. we're in Yeah, this is what God had intended and we're just yes. renewing it again. That's all, yeah. Right. right. Yeah. And then, oh, and, time, though. It took them. It, how many, it, it took them five thousand years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, a lot of things happen in history, and it takes a long time. But five thousand happened in our lifetime. It is is not even a millisecond in the history of the world. That's in the history true. Of the universe, not even a millisecond. I hear you. I do hear you. Okay, where did I stop? Oh, I think we need to turn the page. But oh, okay, I did want to. One, just one more thing is that, and this is new to me, I didn't realize this, but it says that God's going to choose the place once once the Israelis or once the Hebrews go into the land, God's going to choose the place for where they um, will worship him or God. I'm sorry. Sorry to say him or her. Okay. Um, but I just I mean, I'm just interested in that because that does I, I'm, I'm like, wow, I don't know where that is. But I mean, that because what where the temple ended up was David. David did that so many centuries later. He bought the um, uh, he bought a, uh, the threshing floor of somebody in Jerusalem and that became the temple. But anyway, keep going. I'm sorry. OK. And there you shall observe all that I enjoin upon you. But whenever you desire, you may slaughter and eat meat in any of your settlements according to the blessing that the eternal your God has granted you. The impure and the pure alike may partake of it uh, as of the gazelle and the deer. 
but you must not partake of the blood. You shall pour it out on the ground like water. You may not partake in your settlements of the tithes of your new grain or wine or oil or of the firstlings of your herds and flocks or any of the votive offerings that you vow or of your free will offerings or of your contributions. These you must consume before the eternal your God in the place that the eternal your God will choose. You and your sons and your daughters, your male and female slaves, and the family of the Levite in your settlements. Happy before the eternal your God in all of your undertakings. Be sure not to neglect the family of the Levite as long as you live in your land. When the eternal enlarges your territory as promised, and you say, I shall eat some meat, for you have the urge to eat meat, you may eat meat whenever you wish. If the place where the eternal has chosen to establish the divine name is too far from you, you may slaughter any of the cattle or sheep that the eternal gives you, as I've instructed you, and you may eat to your heart's content in your settlements. Eat it, however, as the gazelle and the deer are eaten. The impure may eat it together with the pure. That's interesting. But make sure that you do not partake of the blood, for the blood is the life, and you must not consume the life with the flesh. You must not partake of it. You must pour it out of the ground like water. You must not partake it in order that it may go well with you and with your descendants to come, for you will be doing what is right in the right of the eternal. But such sacred and votive donations as you may have shall be taken by you to the site that the eternal will choose. You shall offer your burnt offerings, both the flesh and the blood, on the altar of the eternal, your God. And of your other sac sacrifices, the blood shall be poured out on the altar of the eternal, your God, and you shall eat the flesh. Be careful to heed all these commandments that I enjoin upon you. Thus it will go well with you and with your descendants after you. Forever for you will be doing what is good and right in the sight of the eternal your God. I want to stop here for a minute. You know, for many years, we've always talked about during the, the time of the temple that we had sacrifices. We have sacrifices now. Why shouldn't we have continued with the sacrifices? Even if the temple was destroyed, why didn't we continue? It was what God asked us to do. Did any, you know, we, we, we changed it to prayers, but why did we do that? Well, first of all, there's no temple to, there's no temple to sacrifice. I mean, if they had rebuilt the temple, tore down the dome of the rock and, uh, and, and built the yeah, temple. Yeah, but there were sacrifices before the temple. Yeah, but I think that, it, I think that they were commanded by by to make the temple to make the temple and then that's why i mean after the after the uh the destruction of the first temple they didn't they didn't sacrifice anymore either it was only yeah. because they have to wait to the temple okay see i always thought that what he was saying the sacrifices no matter what no matter if it was a temple or not because i got the feeling that there were sacrifices before the temple remember they talked about the burnt offerings and this offer, you know, this this way you had to do this sacrifice. I mean, they talked about that for quite a few chapters. So I'm, I'm just confused at why all of a sudden, you know, I heard some Jews believe that we should still be doing sacrifices. I well, did I hear some people I'd like to donate to that cause. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, well, okay, I, I just had to put yeah. my two cents in. When the eternal your God is cut down before you, the nations that you are about to enter and dispossess and you have dispossessed them and settled in their land. Beware of being lured into their ways after they have been wiped out before you. Do not inquire about their gods, saying, how did those nations worship their gods? I, too, will follow these practices. You shall not act thus toward the eternal, your God, for they perform for their gods every abhorrent act the eternal detests. They even offer up their sons and daughters in fire to their gods. Be careful to observe only that which I enjoin upon you. Neither add to it nor take away from it. Okay, somebody else can continue now. I, I can read. Okay, very good. But such sacred and votive donations as you may have shall be taken by you to the site that the eternal will choose. You shall offer your burnt offerings, both the flesh and the blood, on the altar of the eternal your God and of your other sacrifices. The blood shall be poured out on the altar of the eternal your God, and you shall eat the flesh. Be careful to heed all these commandments that I enjoin upon you. 
Thus it will go well with you and with your descendants, with you forever. For you will be doing what is good and right in the sight of the eternal your God. When the eternal your God has cut down before you the nations that you are about to enter and dispossess, and you have dispossessed them and settled them in their land, beware of being lured into their ways after they have been wiped out before you. Do not inquire by their gods, saying, How did those nations worship their gods? I too will follow those practices. You shall not act thus towards the eternal your God, who they perform for their gods every abhorrent act of the eternal detest. They even offer up their sons and daughters in fire to their gods. Be careful to observe only that which I enjoin upon you, and neither add to it nor take away from it. If there appears among you a prophet or a dream diviner who gives you a sign or a portent, saying, let us follow and worship another god, whom you have not experienced, even if the sign or poor the name to you comes true. Do not heed the words of that prophet or that dream diviner. For the eternal your God is testing you to see whether you really love the eternal your God with all your heart and soul. It is the eternal your God alone whom you should follow, whom you should revere, whose commandments you should observe, whose orders you should heed, whom you should worship, and to whom you should hold fast. As for that prophet or dream diviner, such a one shall be put to death for having urged disloyalty to the eternal your God, who freed you from the land of Egypt and who redeemed you from the house of bondage to make you stray from the path that the eternal your God commanded you to follow. Thus you will sweep out evil whom you miss. If your brother, your own mother's son, or your son or daughter, or the wife of your bosom, or your closest friend entices you in secret, saying... Come, let us worship other gods whom neither you nor your ancestors have experienced from among the gods of the people around you, either near to you or distant, anywhere from one end of the earth to the other. Do not assent or give heed to any of them. Show no pity or compassion and do not cover up the matter, but take that person's life. Let your hand be the first to put that person to death, followed by the hand of the rest of the people. Stone that person to death for having sought to make you stray from the eternal your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thus all Israel will hear and be afraid and such evil things will not be done again in your midst. If you hear it said one of, the town, of one of the towns that the eternal your God is giving you to dwell in, that some scrinal Did she freeze? From scoundrels from among you have investigate and inquire and interrogate thoroughly. If it is true, the fact is established that have that abhorrent thing was perpetrated in your midst. Put the inhabitants of that town to the sword and put its cattle to the sword. Doom it and all that is in it to destruction. Gather all its spoils onto the open square and burn the town and all its spoils as a holocaust to the eternal your God, and it shall remain an everlasting ruin never to be rebuilt. Let nothing that has been doomed stick to your hand in order to the eternal return from a blazing anger and show you compassion and in compassion increase you as promised an oath to your fathers. For you will be heeding the eternal your God, obeying all the divine commandments that I enjoin upon you this day, doing what is right in the sight of the eternal your God. I just want to stop here because King Solomon had many, many wives, and it is said that he followed the, the gods of, the, of his wives who were not Jewish. So people didn't really stick to this uh, one God thing forever. Interesting. Yeah, What's you're right. Wow. Look you're at right. the world. Look at the world, huh? Yeah, yeah, well, we get a lot of crazy stuff going on now. So. I like the line in there, um, you, you know, you shall not add for nor take away from it like this is in mm -hmm. stone like this isn't subject to change or i don't like that tara let's take a vote uh can we change <laughs> like you can amend the constitution like we don't get to amend the torah you know mm. but we stray and we go whichever ways that we interpret it sometimes <laughs> like to the point where it doesn't even seem like it you know where it seems like oh, something well, Gary, totally let, let me let me challenge Gary because Gary says so okay. Gary yeah. Odom is fine. Me? Oh God! <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm amazed how smart you are. Uh, <laughs> don't we amend Likewise. the Torah? Every, every, don't we amend the Torah every time we go through this? Don't we reinterpret it? 
Isn't that we, amazing? That's not amending it, though. That's we, no, we, we can, but we're we, not. Yeah, we're not amending it. We we do interpret it. it, but what I'm getting at is that, that that is what I'm saying. We do interpret it, but I'm saying that some people interpret it and twist it like into a pretzel that's so really like things that we're talking about like in other words, I think like I try to I try to get the meaning that I think was being relayed at the time. You know, but I think some people like there are some things that we consider like godlike, and when you read through the Torah, you say, "I don't see anything like that in there." Like, I don't understand how. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I challenge you. Yeah, you have to, you. Yeah, you. I mean, I think we do. I mean, we do. Um, for me myself, I don't know that it's that I reinterpret it, but I, I keep discovering things. You know, you you read it every year. It reinforces what you've gotten from it all the years you've already read it. And then usually something new kind of pops out. And a lot of times it's underground when somebody says something profound, which happens a lot. <laughs> and a lot of times from you, Dr. Ed. <laughs> yeah, don't blame me. I'm waiting for the thunderbolt to come down and get me. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going to die yeah, on a Monday night. I, I, I just <laughs> have to exactly say something I... funny about that. When I was seven, I have to tell you, when I was in seventh grade, I was very upset about God for, for some reason. And I said, I, and I was told that if you ever said God's name and blame that you, you know, you would be killed. I, I don't know where I got this. So I actually swore to God and I was waiting for the lightning bolt. I really remember this. Wow. <laughs> I really you're, swore. You're so brave, brave Ruth. <laughs> You're I so was so brave. angry. No, you don't know. I was an angry little kid. So I was like so angry because it didn't something didn't make sense to me for justice. And I really was one of these little kids that believed in justice. And when I saw something that didn't happen, I said, okay, God, if that's the way it is. And I said, F you to God. Whoa! Yeah. And then, yes, I did. I'm not, a, I'm not a sweet little woman like you think. No, <laughs> and I love I, your and I wanted so bad. I wanted to. I yeah. wanted to see the lightning bolt, but it never happened. So. Well, I still well, think either God loves you. Either loves you. Either that, or I'm uh, gonna get it really good later on. Uh, God didn't want you with me. He said, "No, forget it." Let her. No. <laughs> no, I've done some nasty things in my life. Oh my goodness! No, we all have. We all have. That's 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 incredible. Could, do you mind if I read? Can I read? Oh, go please, ahead, Michael. please, please yeah, go ahead. And, then, and then Philip needs to read. He needs a, some sense. Oh, of Philip. Time. Okay, sure. Yeah. What? Uh, where are we at? I forget. <laughs> number fourteen. You were getting ready to be hit by lightning. Fourteen one. Fourteen yeah. one. Phil, you on? <laughs> What happened to you, Mike? I'll unmute. I thought Michael was going to read, but no, okay, you are in trouble. You are children no, of the eternal, your God. Okay. You shall not gash yourselves or shave the front of your heads because of the dead, for you are a people consecrated to the eternal, your God. The eternal, your God, chose you from among all other peoples on earth to be a treasured people. You shall not eat anything aberrant. These, okay. these are the animals that you may eat, the ox, the sheep, and the goat, the deer, the gazelle, and the roebuck, the wild goat, the ibex, the antelope, the mountain sheep, and any other animal that has true hoofs, which are <laughs> cleft in two, brings up the cud, and brings up the cud, such you may eat. But the following, which do not bring up the cud or have true hoofs, which are cleft through, you may not eat the camel, the hare, and the daemon. For although they may bring up the cud, they have no true hoofs. They are impure for you. And also the swine, for although it has true hoofs, it does not bring up the cud, is impure for you. You shall not eat their flesh or touch their carcasses. These you may eat of all and live in water, uh, that live in water. You may eat anything that has fins and scales, but you may not eat anything that has no fins and scales. It is unpure for you. You may eat any pure bird, 
the following you may not eat, the eagle, the vulture, and the black vulture, the kite, the falcon, and the buzzard of any variety. Every variety of raven, of, ra of raven, the ostrich, the nighthawk, seagull, and the hawk of any variety, the little owl, the great owl, and the white owl, the pelican, the bustard, and the cormorant, the stork of any variety of heron, the hoopoe, and the bat. All wing swarming things are impure for you. You may not, they may not be eaten. You may eat only pure winged creatures. You shall not eat anything that has died a natural death. Give it to the stranger in your community to eat, or you may sell it to a foreigner. For you are a people consecrated to the eternal your God. You shall not boil a kid in its mother's milk. You shall not set aside, you shall set aside every year a tenth part of all the yield of your sowing that is brought from the field. You shall consume the tiths of your new grain and wine and oil and the firstlings of your herds and flocks in the presence of the eternal your God in the place where God will choose to establish the divine name so that you may learn to revere the eternal, your God forever. Should the distance be too great for you, should you be unable to transport them because the place where the eternal God has chosen to establish the divine name is far from you and because the eternal, your God has blessed you, you may convert them into money. Wrap up the money and take it with you to the place that the eternal God has chosen and spend the money on anything you want, cattle, sheep, wine, or other intoxicant, or anything you may desire. And you shall feast there in the presence of the eternal your God and rejoice with your household. But do not neglect the family of the Levite in your community for he has no hereditary portion as you have. Every third year you shall bring out the full tith of your yield of that year, but leave it within your settlements. Then the family of the Levite, who has no hereditary portion as you have, and the stranger, the fatherless, the widow in your settlements, shall come and eat their fill, so that the eternal your God may bless you in all the enterprises you undertake. Every seventh year, you shall practice remission of debts. This will be the nature of the remission. All creditors shall remit the due that they claim from their fellow Israelites. They shall not dun their fellow Israelites or kin, for the remission proclaimed is of the eternal. You may dun the foreigner, but you must remit whatever is due you from your kin. There shall be no needy among you, since the eternal your God will bless you in the land that the eternal your God is giving you as a hereditary portion. If only you heed the eternal your God and take care to keep all this instruction that I enjoin you upon you to this, upon you this day. For the eternal your God will bless you as promised. You will extend loans to many nations, but require none yourself. You will dominate many nations, but they will not dominate you. Can, can I, can I hey. count in for a second? <laughs> feel that, that might. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is so beautiful. All these things that are going to be happening, right? It's like amazing. It's so like beautiful. The one thing that I didn't realize was in Maybe I'm re reading it incorrectly this time, but the first the first offerings to God, the people are are able to eat it in the presence of God. Isn't didn't is that what it read? Is that the the right way to read it? Because I always thought that went to the re Levites, no matter what. Somebody help me out here. Do you, that was like maybe two pages back. It oh, said your see, first grain so offering. Uh, and wine and oil, firstly, and your fox. Oh, right here. 
Yeah. Yeah. Part of all. You shall consume the entity. You shall consume the ties of your new. Yeah, right at the bottom. Grain and wine and oil. Oh, in the the first place. Yeah. Yeah, right there. The right. Place where God, no, it says in the place where God will choose to establish the divine name. I don't think it's in front of God. But it still says in the presence of God, though. Oh, in the presence of God. Okay. But I didn't know that, that people were allowed to eat those first fruits, the first grain and wine and oil and the first link. I didn't realize that until right there. I always thought it went sort of to the Levites for some reason. But, but then, so it kind of, I'm just bringing it out because... What you were saying, Ruth, about, you know, why don't we have sacrifices anymore? And some people believe we should have sacrifices. And I was thinking, well, maybe maybe God doesn't want sacrifices anymore. But then again, it might be good for people to have sacrifices because if they're eating them the, themselves, it might, it might help. After, I don't know. After the temple was destroyed, that's when the rabbis, the rabbinical period. Well, the rabbis said that, 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 but we're not talking. That God I didn't know. want, you know, God didn't care about. Right, and there are yeah. there are that, songs that's, that affect, but see that yeah. that's still a that's still a um, discussion that I don't know. I feel like yeah, the rabbis said that, but the rabbis are rabbis. I mean, it wasn't what was what was the intent in the Torah? That's what I would like to know. Hmm. Well, I, I think this is I think this is all PR. If you had a sacrifice and then you couldn't eat until everyone else had a bite, you're not going to want to sacrifice. This way, I think this this is this is straight PR where where it says, "Look, let's be let's be uh, uh, okay here." And if I'm going to want everyone to sacrifice to me, I better let them have a bite before everyone else does. Or no one's going to want to sacrifice. You're going to find a way of getting out of it. So, <laughs> and and if you, I think the most interesting thing is is and and I, I give this lecture about kashrith and what you eat in the Bible. A lot of the stuff he tells you not to eat, you better not eat because they're pretty lousy stuff. In fact, um, I learned something this, this, this evening. Did, does anyone see the word don't eat the daemon? Do you know what a daemon is? No. I don't know. Yeah, I, these were plentiful in the mountains. They're called rock badgers or dassies. I just looked it up. You better not eat this. They, you know these any of the animals that uh, I forgot, I'm, I'm searching for the word that that eat carrion or that eat or, or that eat dead things or yeah. you better not eat it uh, because uh, scavengers is the word I'm looking at. Oh, scavengers! Any type of scavenger, you better not eat. Uh, he also talks about, I mean, the worst of the worst, as you know, is a pig, because there are so mm-hmm. many. There are books written written on just the parasites in pigs that you, but a lot of the other uh, don't eat the vultures. Well, you, if you, you know, we've got two vultures that, that, that go over, over my house on the Cape all the time. If you see what they eat, it's unbelievably ter- garbage what they eat. So, right. you know, this is this is clear public health and hygiene but you can eat as you know and i I was looking for it uh you can eat uh grasshoppers and you can eat certain insects and i i've asked the rabbi why can you eat an insect you can't eat a pig he said well there were probably so many insects um so but yeah but any of these uh and it was good protein so this is fascinating stuff here and it still holds holds true today. Many of them. Mm-hmm. I like what it says also, about you could buy yeah. any other intoxicant. <laughs> Spend your money on sheep wine or other intoxicant. Oh, good. You know? It's kosher, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. And then, of course, yeah, that- we. Every seventh year, you should practice the remission of debts. That's a nice one. It's all oh, the stuff. Is like one other heaven. thing. How did he say he can't eat an ostrich? How did he? Where would they see ostriches in the Mid East? <laughs> That's what always bugs the heck out of me. You know, where would they see us? Maybe they saw. Maybe they saw it because they were brought into Egypt. But 
Where do you see an ostrich? Well, we, we had, I, I don't, I'm kind of ignorant on that. Where do ostriches usually live? Uh, 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 in other parts of Africa, and mostly parts of Africa and Australia, I think. But, uh, but <laughs> absolutely, there. I don't think there are any ostriches in the Mideast. Phil, do you only see any ostriches in the Mideast? I'm going to look it up. <laughs> Maybe there were there once before. <laughs> Well, it's like when they talk about the dolphin, like the dolphin skin. Oh, yeah, skin. The dolphin skins. I mean, where the hell are you going to find dolphin skins? In They're the everywhere. Skin? They're everywhere. Yeah. yeah. They really are everywhere. Wow. All right. So where oh, were we? Is that the end? Oh. No, we're, I think we're, I think we kind of, because I asked to go back. All right. We're at seven. Oh, we're just, this is, yeah, we're at seven. Yeah, ostriches throughout Africa. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's good to know. Yeah, in case you, you want a pet ostrich, you know. We know where they're talking about. They're horrible. Just don't eat it. <laughs> Just don't eat it. And I don't understand why you can't eat an ostrich. Seems like a pretty nice roast there. But you, we don't eat it. <laughs> we got to have some fun here. Come on. <laughs> Well, I've done so many. I've eaten so many things you're not supposed to eat. I told you I'm a, I'm in big trouble. <laughs> All right, number seven. Doctor Phil. Somebody yeah. else want to read? I'll just continue a little bit more. Okay. If, if however, there is a needy person among you one of your kin in any of your settlements in the land that the eternal God has given you. Do not harden your heart and shut your hand against the, your needy kin. Rather, you must open your hand and lend whatever is sufficient to meet the need. Beware lest you harbor the base thought. The seventh year, the year of remission is approaching so that you are mean and give nothing to your needy kin who will cry out to the eternal against you and you will incur guilt. Give readily and have no regrets when you do so. For in return, the eternal, your God, will bless you in all your efforts and in all your undertakings. For there will never cease to be needy ones in your land, which is why I command you, open your hand to the poor and needy king in your land. If a fellow Hebrew man or woman is sold to you, you shall serve, uh, he shall serve you for six years, and in the seventh you shall set him free. When you set him free, do not let him go empty-handed. Furnish him out of the flock, threshing floor, and vat with which the eternal your God has blessed you. Bear in mind that you were slaves in the land of Egypt, and the eternal your God redeemed you. Therefore, I enjoin this commandment upon you today. But should he say to you, I do not want to leave you, for he loves you and your household and is, in, and, and is happy with you, you shall take an awl and put it through his ear into, and put it through his ear into the door, and he shall become your slave in perpetuity. perpetuity. Oh. Do the same with your female slave. When you do set either one free, do not feel aggrieved, for in the six years you have been given double the service of a hired worker. Moreover, the eternal your God will bless you in all you do. Why do you have to put an all through their ear? That just, I just, I just upsetting to me. Because <laughs> God says to. <laughs> <laughs> this makes me angry. <laughs> I, I think it was putting the all through the ear and probably putting some sort of earring, but also, but to do it as a, um, as a sign of shame that you want to remain a slave, that no one should want to remain a slave. So I, I think it's a symbol of shame, but I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, but they, the, those slaves didn't have a choice. They were not like, I mean, I thought that they didn't have a choice. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, after the six years, they're right. Yeah, they have, they're able to go free if they. I, I agree with Phil. With a hole in their ear. Right, you know, but 
I always say that maybe the slave when we when we use the term slave today, it might not have been the same as back then. It's a you know? servant. It's a servant yeah. more than a slave. Yeah, I understand yeah. that. Yeah. And there might have been maybe a little more uh, respect. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. But because yeah. I can see that, you know, like. For instance, some people who work for the same company year in and year out and are just devoted people, you know, maybe that might somewhat, I'm just throwing it out there. Maybe is that, would that be something of the same? Or if it's like a little small family business and there's only maybe 50 people that work there and they work there all their lives and they just love that owner of the business and they'll do anything, maybe. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there because I know we, when we talk about slaves here, we, no, no one wants to be a slave. No one wants to do that. But there can be love. <laughs> I love your attitude, Mike. I really do. <laughs> well, if you're if you're you can't really consider yourself so much a slave if you're doing it willingly. Like if you yeah. have the option to leave and you say, nah, I want to I didn't it. feel some of them had the option. That's where I was coming from. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, you're not forced maybe, maybe, into it. You're... Maybe they had no place else to go. Uh, right. It's possible. And they became part of the family, really, you know, right. almost. That's what I feel. But, but everything's good. <laughs> right. Where are we now? Because... Where are we? 16? Are we at 16? Or nine, no, 19, right? 19. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. 19. Do you want to continue, Phil? Or? Is he getting tired? No. <laughs> you shall consecrate to the eternal your God all male firstlings that are born in your herd and in your flock. You must not work your firstling ox or share your firstling sheep. You and your household shall eat it annually before the eternal your God in the place that the eternal will choose. But if it has a defect, lameness or blindness, any serious defect, you shall not sacrifice it to the eternal your God. Eat it in your settlements, the impure among you, no less than the pure, just like the gazelle and the deer. Only you must not partake of its blood you shall pour it out on the ground like water. Observe the month of Abib and offer a Passover sacrifice to the eternal your God. For it was the month of Abib at night that the eternal your God freed you from Egypt. You shall slaughter the Passover sacrifice for the eternal your God from the flock and the herd in the place where the eternal will choose to establish the divine name. You shall not eat anything leavened with it for seven days thereafter. You shall eat unleavened bread, bread of distress, for you departed from the land of Egypt hurriedly so that you may remember the day of your departure from the land of Egypt as long as you live. For seven days, no leaven shall be found with you in all your territory and none of the flesh of what you slaughter on the evening of the first day shall be left until morning. You are not permitted to slaughter the Passover sacrifice in any of the settlements that the eternal your God is giving you, but at the place where the eternal your God will choose to establish the divine name. There alone shall you slaughter the Passover sacrifice in the evening at sundown, the time of day when you departed from Egypt. You shall cook and eat it at the place that the eternal your God will choose. And in the morning, you may start back on your journey home. After eating unleavened bread for six days, you shall hold a solemn gathering for the eternal your God on the seventh day. You shall do no work. You shall count off seven weeks. Start to count the seven weeks when the sickle is first put to the strain, uh, standing grain. Then you shall observe the feast of weeks for the eternal your God offering your free will contribution according as the eternal your God has blessed you. You shall rejoice before the eternal your God with your son and daughter, your male and female slave, the family of the Levite in your communities and the strangers the fatherless, 
the widow in your midst, at the place where the eternal your God will choose to establish the divine name. Bear in mind that you were slaves in Egypt and take care to obey these laws. After the ingathering from your threshing floor and your vat, you shall hold the Feast of Booths for seven days. You shall rejoice in your festival with your son and daughter, your male and female slave, the family of the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless and the widow of your communities. You shall hold the festival for the eternal your God seven days in the place that the eternal will choose. For the eternal your God will bless all your crops and all your undertakings, and you shall have nothing but joy. Three times a year on the Feast of Unleavened Bread and the Feast of Weeks, and on the Feast of Booths, all your males shall appear before the eternal your God in the place that God will choose. You shall not appear before the eternal empty-handed, but each with his own gift, according to the blessing that the eternal your God has bestowed upon you. Amen. That's it. Amen. I love it that you should be in joy, complete joy. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's nice. A nice one. That's what's so important about Shabbat. It's like the oasis because your God tells you that you shall. It's a command that you shall be joyous on the Sabbath. And you say, like, how do you command an emotion? You can't command an emotion, but you command people to engage in certain activities that result in joy. Or uplift. And I have you know? two words for that. Yismahu Ahi. Yeah, baby. Oh, God, yeah. That's yeah, my. Uh, that gives me that, joy that's, every that's Saturday. That's my opus. That's my thing, right? <laughs> Once I yeah. hear those beautiful chords, don't. Dun, dun. Oh, man. <laughs> the solo? You don't like my crazy solos? Oh, that, that was amazing on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> Everything oh, about God. it. I can't wait to oh. do it again with you in person. We're wild oh, and God. crazy. I know. Well, you know the temple. Well, we gotta wait till I talked to Mike Ard. I um, f- uh, last Friday night at the sur- you know we had the outdoor service. Oh yeah. And um, yeah. but he he I know he was saying that the new sanctuary isn't going to have the Zoom stuff set up immediately. Hmm. You know, but I mean, it will be on there, but it's not right now. It's not like on the top of the priorities to get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, that doesn't, that you know, may be able to do something else in the meantime. Does that mean we're going to be being more in insert in person service? Maybe like once a month or something like that would be cool. Uh, I'd like to be more in person. I'm tired of Zoom. I know, but it's a lot of work for me. It's like I spend my whole day. I understand, yeah, and yeah. It's yeah. it just I don't I just don't have the energy to do all yeah. that. I mean, doing the service yeah. itself, even when I do it on Zoom, it takes a lot of energy, you know. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. But but you know, even once or twice a month, we could do it twice a month, something yeah. like that. Yeah. I just miss I miss yeah. seeing everybody. That's just me. Yeah. I'm a I'm a people person. So. Yeah. 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 Yep. All right. Well, this was a, a very uh, good, I think it was a very good passion, not one of those horrible passions we were, we were having all these mm. things we have to deal with. I think it's kind of a, it's a very uplifting passion. I like I like the cause and effect because in, in this, just the yeah. title, or A, it's yeah. like the command, like it doesn't mean like to see something. It's like, look, see. I said before you, nice. yeah, yeah. You know, look, see, I give you this and this, and and you have the choice. It's the cause and effect, and you get to choose. Right. You get to affect, right? You get to right. choose how, and that that's basically it. It's like you know, it's interesting that you bring. It's interesting that you bring that up because just today I saw this video from Rabbi Manis Friedman. Friedman, I don't know. You must know him because he's a big author. But he said something really amazing on this small video. He said that, um, why do we have to do anything? Why, why we don't need to do anything? He, he, like he's like, he's like saying, what, 
what, you know, if you go to any young person, they'll say, why do I need to do this? And he's like, you're right. You don't need to do this. Like the rabbi saying this. And he said, but you know who does need you to do it? God needs you to do it. And, um, and so I let that swim around in my mind a little bit. And I thought, that's brilliant. That's a brilliant concept. Because even a lot of times we get hit over the head. You got to do this. You got to do this. You got to, you know, pray. You got to do these things. But if we consider to, there's, a, there's a need out in the world, there's a need, somebody needs us to do something, usually we'll, we'll engage a little bit more rather than just doing it for ourselves, right? We'll engage if it's, and this, this is his whole point. But if you take it even further and you say, well, look at, look at the last 5,000 years, look at the last, and how we really haven't engaged fully in this commitment, right? We always, and the beauty of the Bible is always saying how we strayed back and forth, we didn't follow. But maybe that's a great idea to just to be committed just because God needs this commitment and how much beautiful, how much more awesome life would be. Can I Not add so something? For God. Yeah, go. I, I honestly, for God, but I think God wants, commands us to do these things more for ourselves. In a lot of ways, I think that God doesn't need certain things. God needs us. How do I say? It's hard to explain. Does that to make sense? To fulfill the creation, to fulfill the yeah, cre like, creation like, of it all. And and by our abiding by what God wants, like it's better for us. True. Um, and then I guess in so doing, we make ourselves more pleasing to God. You know. You know what I right. think of? I think of that God is like a parent. He's trying to teach us things. And kids yeah. kids naturally rebel. And yep. I mean, that's how I look at it. And that mm, we're going to be too. testing all the time. So that's yep. why there's always people in general that are not always going to follow the rules. And then you have to learn what, what happens when you don't follow it. That's, that's mm. how I look at it. Yep. Mm. You could either learn through knowledge you know, you could study or you could learn from somebody else's mistakes. Or just or by your you, actions. It's, yeah, I mean, it's probably easier to learn from other people's mistakes right. than to, you know, you learn a harder lesson when you learn it the hard way. But mm. there again, you have the choice. Mm -hmm. It's more enduring when you, <laughs> when you learn well, it yourself. Uh, It'll yeah. stick with you. <laughs> Won't do that ever again. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Thanks, everyone. This is a lot of fun. Very, yeah, very fun. great. Thank great. You. Good night. Thank you. And everybody uh, for Ru being here. Thank Rudy. you. Yeah, Rudy wanted to say hello. Rudy! 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 Look at that face. Rudy, on, Look at him. Hello. He's a He's good boy. Rudy, say hello to everybody. Do we wake you up, baby? No, he just... He's been up. He wants some attention from me. He's oh in services gosh. every Saturday, so now he's getting into studying Torah. Now he's getting into studying Torah, right? Such a nice right, Jewish well, thanks, cat. folks. It was a wonderful <laughs> yeah. night. I'm going I'm to uh, oh. sign off. All right, everybody. Nice seeing Thank everybody. you Good all. Good night. Bye-bye. Yes. All right, see, see you next week. Nice seeing you, too, Bruce. Bye-bye. See you, Phil. Bye, Phil. Bye, Bye, everybody.